Okay. Hello, everybody, and um, welcome to our meeting, um, our youth services support meeting. I know all of you are um, busy and have a lot going on, so I want to keep this short and keep it to, to 30 minutes. And as I mentioned, this is being uh, recorded, so if if you want to watch it again or um, if, if someone in your library hasn't seen it, um, you can watch that recording. I will post it later today. So the purpose of today's meeting, as I mentioned in the email, is to look at current practices and youth services monetary support. Um, so that I think there's a difference between monetary support and then just uh, serve, um, support in other ways. And uh, which which we do both of, but I want to talk a little bit about how we will start to go about um, serving uh, youth, youth current youth services programs a little bit differently. So right now, as in terms of monetary support from from Nicolay, there's there's three main areas where we we provide some monetary support. So the first one is our summer performer, which I've been um, coordinating the last ten years, and I'm sure it has been done for many, many years before for, before I began. Um, we also um, give a stipend for materials for Upstart um, that has to do with the summer library materials. Um, it used to be that the cost of the summer library um, program uh, manuals, um, we were given so many paper copies um, by the division. Um, they are now electronic, they're now electronic versions. Um, and we are not going to purchase the paper manuals anymore because they are um, they're fifteen dollars a manual. Um, last year we received um, X amount of copies on a USB drive, and we made um, more copies for all of you for that. Um, so those are some ways in which we're um, supporting um, some of the youth services. I think if we look at the advantages of what we've been what we have been doing in terms of the summer performer um, the good thing on your end is that a lot of the legwork is done you know we work with the uh, performer on pricing um, we you know we ask you to help work with someone and usually coordinate the dates um, but a lot of the legwork is done we even you know work on some of the promotional materials for you we do get a small price break um, for booking X amount of shows, we usually book anywhere between 20 to 24 um, libraries per summer, um, depending on who is on the on the schedule. I say small price break because I've noticed as in the last, I don't know, five, six, seven years, as, well, now gas isn't as high, but when gas started going up in 2008, 2009, we weren't getting as much of a price break because we were paying a lot for performers to travel to the various regions. As far as Upstart, I think, you know, the materials are of good quality, and I think, you know, they're reliable. You know, if you put in your order on time, you get these materials pretty quickly. So I think there are some nice advantages, advantages to that. If we look at would do that. the disadvantages as far as the summer performer, um, one size doesn't fit all. As I mentioned, um, I have to book between you know, usually 21 to 24 um, different libraries. And um, I tend to go with the smallest denominator because I have to pick someone who's going to fit in a 10 by 10 space for some of our very small and rural libraries. But then does that translate to a bigger space or to some place like Brown County Central where they have an auditorium that seats, I don't know, a couple hundred people? Um, so that, that doesn't always work work so well. Um, most of you are on the schedule every other year. So unless you are, are Brown County or Shano or Door County, um, you have to wait a year to get the performer that is um, that we choose. Your choice is limited. You basically have to go with what I choose. And again, that is dependent on who is available, who um, is in the area, um, who has decent pricing, because um, we are we are um, on a limited budget for it. Um, there's also, you know, usually with most performers, I draw up a contract before we even, you know, begin the summer. And if there are any changes to your schedule or if something happens at your library, um, there is usually a fee for making a change. And that usually ends up costing us some money. 
As far as upstart, again, your choices are limited. There are a lot of things in the catalog, but again, um, your choices are limited on what on what you get, and the focus is primarily on summer. Um, so, in the past couple of years, you know, I've I've heard from a variety of people. Um, you know, do we have to use Upstart? Could we use the money for something else? Or we're not really focusing on the summer reading theme this year. We want to go a different way. So we don't really want to get any of these materials. Um, so it, it, the last couple of years I've been thinking, you know, is this, is this model working anymore? Um, is, it, is it a good model for us? Um, on the next page, or on the next slide, eh, you're going to see, again, Here's a map of where the bouncing bus is going to go this summer. Um, so all the way up to Florence, a lot of libraries in between, um, west to Burnham Wood, and up through Sturgeon Bay. Um, so we, again, you know, you know, you know, we serve a, a large area of libraries, um, but also a lot of that money we're using is to pay for mileage to send um, that performer to all of those libraries. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, Tessa, if you wouldn't mind um, joining in, I wanted you to talk a little bit, bit about um, um, this document that was put together by the, by the DPI. Sure. Uh, Jamie, uh, thanks uh, for having me, and thanks for being open both on a state level and in Nicolay about rethinking the way you're doing things, and especially as this document tries to reinforce why are you doing what you're doing. So uh, this document hopefully isn't unfamiliar to the library staff in the Nicolay system. Um, these were shared in the past uh, one to two years. This is the document that's called uh, uh, Top 10 Tips for Librarians, and there's uh, a, a similar document, Top 10 Tips for Parents and Caregivers, about participating in library reading programs. And these two documents um, basically outline 10 main considerations to think about what is this all about. And the flip side, thanks for scrolling, Jamie, um, links to the, the main ideas behind these, and they're all research-based. At the very bottom of the document is the website, which I'll also put in the chat, where you can find all of the articles and research pieces that these, these come from. So again, I know a lot of libraries uh, have, they've been doing things the way they've been doing them, but when they start to think about, well, if we did something different, how, how do we know this is the right thing to do? These documents are really intended to offer some support for here's, here's what the research says. And again, the two documents, one for families and one for library staff. The one I want to talk today about is, is the library staff. Um, as your system is thinking about perhaps other ways to use the resources from, from Nicolay to support you services. And this document outlines some ideas of how you can think about literacy in your library all year round. Um, we often focus on summer as our, our main reading season, but as you can see from one of those boxes on there, reading happens all year round. So I was really excited that Jamie is open to thinking about ways that, that the monetary support might be spread th spread throughout the year. Maybe you have something else going on. That is something we really reinforce, and it's a great message for the families in your community that reading in the library isn't just one, one season of the year, that there's different ways to do it. So the thing that I guess I just want to point out to, to you all here is that I'd really urge you to be thinking about how you might spend your money, what other ways you might show how your library is supporting literacy in the lives of kids in your community, whether that is with some outside support like a uh, performer or if it's just looking at different ways to have resources or opportunities throughout the year. This document is just, like I said, the research that says when you're doing a big reading thing, whether it's a summer library program or just a special uh, a special event or just your ongoing youth services programs, uh, these are some ideas that really re reinforce the literacy needs. So I think I'm going to pause there, and I'll uh, put some resources in the chat. And uh, Jamie, you just let me know if you want me to speak to any other pieces of this. OK, great. Thank you, Tessa. All right, we will go back to the slideshow. 
Okay, so I, I thought it would be helpful to get an idea of what other systems are doing as far as monetary uh, support. So I did um, surveys, all of them, and these were the, the systems I, I heard back from. I apologize for all the acronyms, but we like acronyms anyway. <laughs> so if we look at the top, um, WVLS is Wisconsin Valley. Um, they do continue to do a cash stipend for um, each library for a summer performer. Um, it does sound like the libraries do do set up and book their own performer, but they do provide stipends for that. Um, Winifox Library System um, helps with some printing of summer materials, um, but uh, so that is what they do. Um, OWLS near us, they also do cash stipends for summer programming grants. I'm not sure if every library, I think they have 17 libraries in their, in their system. Um, I'm not sure if they all get one or how that works, but that's what they do. Um, at the bottom, um, Indian had, Arrowhead, Southwest, and Milwaukee County, um, those systems do not provide any financial support for youth services. Um, they provide services in other ways, um, but as far as giving out cash grants or stipends for Upstart or other materials, um, they, they do not do that um, at this time. So I'm, I'm glad that we still have some funds available um, that we can share as far as youth services, I, you know, I, and I'm hoping that doesn't go away. So I guess when talking to these other systems, I was happy to see that we are still able to do something in terms of monetary support, which I think is good. So looking at a new model um, starting for 2017, um, what I'd like to do or what I plan on doing is um, having youth services, what we just call them, are, would be support funds. And they would be available starting in 2017 in January um, to be used at any time. We'd have a pre-approved list of activities, uh, materials, and vendors um, which you could use for what you'd want. And instead of some of you receiving a performer and some of you not, um, each library would receive some funds every year. You're probably asking how much um, for funds, you know, how much will you be getting? And that is to be determined. Um, it will depend on our budget for 2017, which probably won't be approved until October, I'm sorry, August or September. Um, it will depend on what um, my area is given in terms of CE and youth, um, in youth programming and um, what is given to the materials budget. I'm hoping it'll be comparable to what we've received in the past, but I, I, unfortunately I can't give you an exact number at this time. But the idea is that everybody would receive something. I think there are some good advantages to this. Um, one thing is that you won't be tied to one summer performer or upstart materials. Um, you can use the money on something that you want. It gives you also some more flexibility for your library because the funds will be available starting in January. So maybe your library does a really cool program around Valentine's Day. You can use the funds for that. They don't have to be tied to summer. Um, and essentially what we'll do is at the end of the year or when your activities are finished, um, you will turn in a reimbursement form um, to reimburse, to be reimbursed for what you did. I have a sample of what the form would look like. It would be something very simple. Um, this would just be a Google Doc. I'm still tweaking it, but essentially we would just ask um, for the program or the vendor, the cost, how many people would you estimate benefited from this program or service, and then who the check would be made payable to. And again, this is something I'm still tweaking. Um, and if it would be something, if, if you have suggestions as to what else um, would be helpful to be on, to, of what would be helpful to be on this form, um, you can let me know that as well. So what I'm looking for from all of you, and one, one of the main reasons I wanted to have this meeting is from now until the end of summer, I'd like to get some ideas on what could be on this approved list. Um, so we're talking things like book vendors, Baker and Taylor, Follett, Scholastic, um, Interstate Books for School. Um, you would still be able to use this money to hire or to bring in a library guest, <laughs> is what we're going to call it, um, or a, a library program or an author, um, and we would just need a copy of that invoice for your library to be reimbursed. You're also still able to use it for Upstart. Um, you could also use the money to um, create marketing materials to support your youth program. Um, that would all be fine. Some areas where 
um, we would not be able to reimburse the money, or we prefer not to reimburse it. Would be anything that has to do with toys or materials not on the list. I'm thinking things from um, like Oriental Trading. Um, any food for a program um, would not be reimbursable. We, when we apply for LSTA grants, um, we typically cannot get reimbursed um, for food. Um, so I'd like to keep that consistent with this. Um, any kind of coupon or a giveaway, so like a, a coupon for a dollar off a cone or for a free cone at McDonald's, um, um, we would also like to not see for something like this. I'm not saying those things aren't, aren't valuable or good, but I'm hoping either if you want these types of things that your library could support them or maybe your friend's group could support um, some of these things. So essentially if it's something that's not on the list or something that wouldn't be pre-approved um, by me, um, it, 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 it wouldn't be reimbursable. We're going to try this um, over the next two years um, because I think there might be some glitches next year or there might be a, a period of an adjustment and I think um, some of those things might need to be worked out. So I don't want to, I never like to try something once and if it, if it fails terribly, um, use that as um, a guideline because I think you need, you need some time to kind of see how a new program is going to work. So I'd like to try this at least for the next two years and then evaluate it after that and see how it works. So what I would like to see, um, you know, if you have any ideas for what could be on the, the, the approved list for things that will be reimbursed, um, please send your ideas my way. And uh, I know you're going to be busy, really busy in the next few weeks with summer reading approaching. Um, so I will give you reminders throughout the summer um, that I'm kind of looking for these ideas. I'm hoping to have more information at our grassroots meeting, which I don't think I've mentioned this yet because it just got scheduled. Um, but our grassroots meeting will be on Tuesday, October 4th, um, I believe from noon until 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. I have to look. Um, but I'm hoping to have more information um, definite information and maybe even what your library will be getting in terms of monetary support at that meeting. So at this time, if anyone has any questions or comments, um, oh, we ended quicker than I thought we would. Um, I'd be happy to take those. You can um, use the chat box for that or you can um, unmute yourself and use um, and and just talk talk to us. Um, Tessa, I was just curious. It, did you have any other ideas in mind when it would come to what types of in what types of areas where libraries could use these funds? Um, I think I put, what, put one idea in the chat. I, you offered um, book vendors. I think that's a great way to reinforce the, the reading choices, how important that is for the kids having ownership of what they read that's not part of um, perhaps a school year curriculum. So that is just one of a, a really consistent and research uh, ver verified way of, of supporting literacy for, for kids outside of the school setting. Um, I also really like any idea that supports uh, family involvement in literacy at the library. You know, maybe that is having an author or illustrator to come and give a program, but also finding ways that, you know, you can build in some programming around that rather than just having a speaker who maybe can speak to a handful of folks, but doing some, some programming that encourages families to understand how, how books are made and how they, they all have their own stories to tell um, is really valuable. I think that um, finding ways to think about using Upstart, which you said is one of the ways that they can continue to, be, to, to have funding, is thinking about using that, uh, stretching the, the theme for the whole year. Um, while maybe it's something you launch in the summer, there are so many activities to do. Um, it doesn't have to just be limited when, once August rolls around. So that's something that requires a little planning and thinking ahead but offers ways to kind of extend all of the stuff that is packed into all of the upstart materials. Um, and I also just really encourage folks to maybe check into what their schools are doing and how they can help reinforce some of those things because your schools might want to partner on something or they might 
have a great idea of something that kids in the community are interested in that just maybe is not on your radar. So um, I also feel like people hopefully will just have their, their wish list for you, Jamie, that <laughs> since you ask, here's, here's what they, they would like. But really anything that reinforces your library's mission is, is based in um, a lot of things we've been talking today are, are literacy, since that's you know the, the heart of the summer library program. But if this is for youth services broadly, then um, just really reinforcing why, why it's something your library is often uh, offering, which should be directly connected to your to your mission. So I feel like there's there's a whole range of things out there that people might want might want monetary support to do. I agree. Um, a question came in about um, what did you have in mind for the reimbursement schedule and the the concern of um, I don't know that we can afford to float the cost for very many months. Um, I would think that we we'd want you to maybe to group them together as closely as possible. Um, but if it was a, a larger cost um, and you needed reimbursement with within a month, I'm guessing that that would not be um, an issue. Any other um, questions or comments on what we what we talked about? Um, Tessa, do you know of um, so I, on the the one screen I mentioned some of the systems um, that are still doing a or or giving a, a cash stipend for performers? Do you know of any other systems offhand or of groups that are going to try what what, what we're trying? I feel that um, most systems have at least had some conversations of how can how can we rethink this and um, sometimes it's at some systems of just doing a little bit more grassroots work on let's just keep track for our own regional use who we we like to have and try to just make a more concerted effort for th those of us who want somebody right let's be in com you know the same person so sometimes it's just been more of like a communication change versus a uh, different way of spending money. Um, I also know that some folks are, are moving away from having, um, what you what was the term you used for a, a presenter? Is that the way you said? Just a, 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 a guest, a, a guest. Former. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or just trying to be really considered about it because often when you look at the, the price per attendee, it can be rather high when you think of, Okay, are we gonna are we willing to spend eight dollars per child to have this person come in? You know, thinking about generally how what your audience is going to be, which can really vary. Some places you're going to get a hundred kids and kids and their families. Other places you're lucky if you get forty, or depending on what else is happening in the community that night. Um, and sometimes it can just really be uh, a pretty big price tag when you look at the number of individuals who are, are benefiting versus if you took those dollars and invested in maybe um, some books to to give away as part of um, a program or you know perhaps offer purchasing some other materials that can be used by a lot more people you know it's kind of a, a balance and it really depends on the individual library but I found that more people are spending time thinking about um, the overall purpose and the outcomes of, of why they're spending money on what they're spending money on. And I think that's something so, we all need to do, even at even at a system level. You know, I before I even just book a, you know, a webinar program or a workshop, I, I kind of have to think, um, you know, is this going to be a good return on investment for who who might it? You know, um, is it worth it to bring in a speaker for five hundred dollars when we might only get ten people to attend, you know, this program? So. I think it's something we all need to be rethinking. Um, another thing that I that I've um, struggled with, I guess, is um, you know, in in some years, you know, I'll get feedback um, from some libraries who really who really just for whatever reason didn't really care for the performer that we had, right. um, but they but they took this person anyway because it was like, well, I'm not going to turn it down. I'm not, you know. If you're, right. if, you're throw, if you're throwing this at me, um, you know, and it, it's not costing us a lot, of course I'll take it, you know, but I, but they, maybe they weren't, again, maybe it didn't fit with their mission or necessarily with something they really wanted. And I just, I feel like um, 
this will give our libraries a lot more freedom in that. And right. That makes sense. Well, two, t two small things that I'll speak to about that. One is that I feel that, you know, if you are really looking at that wanting to have a big impact with a special guest, that's when I really encourage you to do some partnership with somebody else in your community, whether it's a school or something else, so that there's, there's a lot of programming and things surrounding the, the one event. So even if, right. you know, the family or whoever can't come to hear this Saturday afternoon performance, there's a lot, been a lot of other things that speak to the theme or why you're having them come anyway. Often, um, I know libraries are really good at this, if somebody's speaking at a school, then maybe they do like a abbreviated evening performance or something like that. I feel like that's a, a great way to, you know, it's a win-win on multiple levels. I also know, especially with last year's summer library theme of the kind of community heroes aspect, that um, a number of libraries went to trying to find local heroes, so to speak, to be right. their guests. Right. Um, you know, Sue Abrahamson in Wapaka gives this great example about how they had contacted the, the 4-H and had the kids who were practicing the dog agility set up the dog agility course on the library lawn and how fun it was for the kids attending to watch kids their age try to train these dogs and oh, yeah. the kids... The 4-H kids needed the practice anyway, and it was is free and a win-win. And you know, what's the difference between the excitement of seeing, you know, kids and dogs that are your local local folks versus some high-profile dogs that are going to come in and cost a lot of money for whatever else? So it sometimes is tricky to do who are those people in your community. But I know that's another route people are are taking to try to better uh, respond to to what's happening in their community. So that's another way to look at the whole um, special guest angle. Yeah, and I'm and, and this is something they can still do, but I think but it, it could be someone they, they really want or maybe have wanted, you know, for um, a long time. So I, I think having more choices and more freedom in this, I think, will be more beneficial to everybody. Yeah. Okay, well, my clock says 12.30. So I want to thank um, all of you for joining in. I want to thank um, Tessa for um, being available to um, give some feedback on this. As I mentioned, um, we are recording the session, and I will um, post that to the website later today and let you know where that link is at. And um, thank you again for listening in, and I'd love to hear your feedback on um, any um, ideas for what you might want to be on this list for um, any or any questions you might have, it'll it'll be a, a you know a work in progress and something that I think will be really exciting you know for for all of us. So I um, will be in touch with all of you and I hope you have a great rest of your day.